A warm welcome to this session on improving science literacy, and thank you for joining us. My name is Fabiola Gianotti. I'm a particle physicist, and currently I'm the head of CERN, the European Laboratory for Particle Physics, based in Geneva, in Switzerland. Over the past year, science has been uh, in the spotlight as, uh, as never before. And it's reassuring to see science center stage uh, with, uh, with governments listening to scientists before taking decisions and before implementing measures, and distinguished scientists, virologists, immunologists, epidemiologists on the front pages. But a sustainable world requires science to remain center stage at all times, also outside periods of crisis. And public understanding and engagement and citizens' trust play an essential role to achieve this, this goal. So how can we improve science literacy? How can we empower citizens to navigate the huge amount of information they are bombarded with and make sense of what they hear and, and, and read? How should we scientists improve on communicating science? And what is the responsibility of research institutions, science communicators, publishers, academia, and, uh, and education? So we will try to address this and other questions with our distinguished uh, panelists. Let me introduce them. Jean-Pierre Bourguignon, you are a mathematician and currently the president of the European Research Council. Good morning, Jean-Pierre. Bonjour. Good Bonjour, morning. Jean-Pierre. Magdalena Skipper, you are a geneticist and the editor-in-chief of Nature. Good morning, Magdalena. Good morning. Sho Tsuji, you are a psychologist and an assistant professor and principal investigator at the University of Tokyo. You are also a WEF uh, Young Scientist 2020. You are currently in Paris, so it's morning also for you. Good morning, Sho. <laughs> so welcome to all of you. Let me start with you, uh, Magdalena. Can you please tell us, can you please help clarify what do you mean by science literacy? Mm, thank you, uh, Fabiola. Thank you for this opportunity. So let me say first that for me as um, editor-in-chief of a 150-year-old multidisciplinary science journal with a mission to communicate science to the research community, but also to a wider public, this is a very important issue. Um, I think it's helpful to think about science literacy as encompassing three aspects. Perhaps the most obvious one, uh, the one that uh, most will think of first, is the knowledge or familiarity of the basic science facts. Uh, this is about understanding the world we live in, um, how we interact with it, and understanding our bodies, our physiology, etc. Second, equally important, is the understanding of the scientific method, um, that science is progressive, that scientists change their position, their opinion, um, as new information comes to light. And of course, the current pandemic um, has been a great illustration of it, um, especially in its early days when modeling of the pandemic was evolving based on uh, real world data. And some um, uninformed commentators inappropriately dismissed scientific um, advice because of this and, and, and therefore doubting the, the experts and their expertise. And of course, understanding how scientists draw the conclusion equips, ev equips everyone uh, with the ability to do the same. For example, assess if information they're receiving uh, is likely to be true or not. And then the third aspect uh, of science um, literacy is the appreciation how science influences every walk of real life, how relevant it is, regardless of who or where we are. And, you know, this week at, at this virtual Davos meeting, uh, we've had so many examples regarding sustainable energy, food systems and many others. And you yourself referred to sustainability in, in the opening remarks. And none of these approaches, in my view, will work without the buy-in from the wider society. And, and for that, we require science literacy with all these three elements. Thank you very much. That was very clear and also very comprehensive. So the next point, and I would like to ask Jean-Pierre to, to start uh, a discussion on this 
why is uh, science literacy important, particularly in the COVID context, but not only? And what would a future uh, of improved science literacy look like? Well, thank you for bringing this up. Uh, I'm very pleased to speak after Magdalena because she very clearly, eloquently showed that there is not just the scientific results which are important, but also uh, the scientific method. And I think uh, in particular at this uh, very moment, uh, some of the features of the scientific methods really uh, make, the, uh, make the need for science literacy even higher. Uh, just to one thing which is very important for, for science to work is really the, the method used in, in, for example, checking facts, in challenging facts, but in a way uh, in which uh, you, you just provide the tools to really, uh, um, really establish the facts very safely. And to do that, of course, requires time. And therefore, a time like a COVID, where you want uh, things to happen as quickly as possible, because the challenge is huge, um, actually is for scientists a, a very difficult time, because we need time to check things. And uh, the tendency to jump on results is, of course, uh, something which uh, could actually affect the solidity of the scientific, uh, uh, the scientific facts. So this is one element. The other element, which also has to do with our way of absorbing new things, is that the number of achievements of science are absorbed by people at a fantastic speed. And, and from that point of view, uh, for example, we are talking about the viruses. Viruses operate at the nanoscale, which means one billionth of a meter. So you imagine it's, it's like going from one individual to the whole population of the world. So, so that's the scale. And so uh, really people have absorbed the idea of going to, to the nanoscale as something uh, obvious. Of course it's not obvious. It required huge new developments in science, huge new developments in technology, and making this technology available worldwide. So for the future, if we want to make progress on this, that is having people uh, really appreciating the fantastic achievements of science, uh, really we need the education everywhere to confront people, not just with scientific facts, but at the same time with the scientific method so that they can appropriate and really value how much uh, all these things are, uh, uh, all the things which have been achieved. And, uh, Basically, all the concepts we are using today as obvious things, for example, the concept of energy, it took uh, centuries to develop it. Yes. The concept of uh, microbes, the concept of viruses, there are things which, um, of course, didn't exist um, uh, a century and a half ago. And so you, you had to create them, develop tools to explore them. So this is where uh, science literacy makes a difference because people put both value, but also have the personal experience, if they are confronted early enough with the scientific method, uh, to, to really all these things. Thank you, Jean-Pierre. So we see now this element emerging that uh, a scientific literacy, not just facts and results, outcome of science, but also involved in the citizen early on also in the development of the, of the, of the process and uh, in the scientific method and understanding uh, what doing science really means. Uh, so let me, let me continue with you, uh, uh, Shaw, because uh, citizens have different level of engagement with science. So where do we want to get to in terms of science literacy? Do we have a kind of target goal what, or just uh, as much as possible? Yes, yeah, so uh, Magdalena and Jean-Pierre have uh, very well pointed out the importance of science literacy and that education might be the, the way to, to get there. Um, and I guess in order to answer your question, it's important to think about where do these different levels of engagement actually come from? And I guess two main factors are um, uh, the, the, the importance or relevant assigned to science by people, right? So it, you can say the effective domain, some people um, actually are not interested at all in science or even have negative attitudes towards science that we have observed a lot uh, during this pandemic. Uh, and the other domain would be the cognitive domain. So even if you're interested in science, you might perceive that you don't have the tools to actually understand science. And I guess, uh, I guess education should um, address these two um, 
factors. So for first, um, uh, elucidate a positive interest into science and then the tools in order to actually be able to engage with it. And I guess there's a few things we need to keep in mind um, when we want to implement these things. Uh, there are factors that can influence how much um, people uh, or what attitude people have on these two domains. So one uh, could be intercultural uh, or within society differences. For instance, we have seen that countries have different engagements, uh, um, different levels of trust maybe in what the government says. And so if you have a very trusty society, you might actually that might lead to less interest in, in science literacy, right? Um, on the other hand, there might be religious belief, et cetera, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, yeah, that uh, serve a negative attitude towards science. Um, and on the cognitive domain, so how much do you think you can understand about science? When we teach it, we should be aware of some uh, general cognitive biases that people might have. I think one thing that we have seen a lot is, for instance, the confirmation bias. People like to uh, search for the information that they already like or know. So this is why, for instance, um, if someone says, oh, 100 people have died from the vaccine, um, then uh, people like this information if they're against vaccines and do not consider uh, the control group that 100 people might have died in general during this time, um, etc. So I guess, um, yeah, I would say um, uh, where we want to get, of, where we want to get, of course, as much science literacy as possible. And I guess we have to raise interest and a positive attitude, give people the tools to evaluate science. Um, yeah, this would be my answer. Thank you, uh, Sho. And thank you also for mentioning uh, trust, which is a very important component. Actually, I would like to mention that uh, Jean-Pierre Magdalena and I are members on, of a, a Global Future Council um, of the WEF on scientific collaboration. And trust is one of the main topics that we are addressing now, how, how we are going to increase, uh, improve trust and increase uh, trust among citizens and, and therefore also the support to, um, to science. So, um I Yes, yes. Could Madalena, I just add please. One, one, one point, since we are discussing specifically citizens uh, in the context of, of um, science literacy, and so Sho already alluded to this, I think one way to increase um, um, or, or dovetails with scientific li literacy is that engagement of citizens, members of the general public, in science itself. I think sometimes, and certainly in the past, we talked about science as something being apart from the general society and only benefiting the fruits of the scientific endeavor would benefit the society. I think it's instructive and, and constructive to think about it as science being very much part and parcel of society. And so the more literacy we have, the easier it will be to engage the widest possible public in the scientific activity and, and therefore that engagement will also feed back to incre increase scientific literacy. I think it's useful to think about it in that context as well. Absolutely, and there are initiatives like uh, Folding at Home where uh, uh, the citizen can, uh, the young people or also the senior people can, can, uh, can offer their computing resources to, uh, to scientists, for instance, uh, doing research on the, on the vaccine. And so they are part of the adventure, they are part of the, of the fight against the, the, the pandemic on the front line. Um, uh, I, I, obviously, uh, all of you um, are um, important players in, the, in your respective fields. You, 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 are, uh, you are reference people in what, what you do. So uh, can, we, can we see how your respective fields can contribute to boosting uh, scientific literacy? So for instance, Jean-Pierre, what is the role of, uh, of science funders like the uh, ERC in this context? Well, thank you for raising this because actually this is something on which uh, the European Research Council the ERC has really been working. Um, in a sense, uh, the, the way we function is we try to empower scientists. We trust them, we ask them to submit their most ambitious project. But one thing we wanted to also um, help them is to share what they have been doing and uh, with the wider public. So one uh, project, for example, we have uh, financed is uh, what we call ERC Comics, which means uh, web comics uh, which tell the stories of um, some research work done by the, the scientists. What I really find amazing about this project is that the people who, who design the, the comics and the scientists continue to work even after the end of the project. 
it shows that there was really also this linkage between science and art, which also was meaningful. But another thing we have also created are special awards for the public engagement with research, which really means, again, that uh, we uh, encourage and actually we valued and we awarded uh, some distinctions to some of the scientists who really showed um, the re remarkable capacity in, uh, in doing this uh, engagement. And uh, we did that in uh, various ways. Uh, I mean, the, the awards have uh, various dimension. One has to do with the media, another one has to do really with the events organized with the public, um, and others have, have to do with the kind of documents uh, of all kinds that people produce. So in a sense, we felt our responsibility was again in the spirit of a bottom-up approach that is really initiative left to the scientists to encourage them uh, to really um, uh, do these efforts, uh, because we, we really consider that uh, this uh, sharing uh, and the, the as broad as possible uh, is absolutely necessary. But we still feel in, the, in, in our case that uh, the scientists should be the actors. And uh, sometimes they have to join forces with people who are prof more professional of communication, like artists, uh, but in some cases uh, we know they also mobilize um, many, many young people in connection with schools, in connection with uh, various activities involving uh, younger people, also with in mind the need to motivate the next generation to really be uh, find the science uh, a possible um, life for them in the sense that is they it's a, also we see this as a good way of uh, preparing the next generation that is having more people considering like doing research and de dedicating their life to science is worthwhile so speaking of young uh, generation uh, so you you are a young scientist uh, but also uh, so you are you are you are familiar with science and and also with uh, with social media and uh, and modern ways of 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 communicating so uh, what role do scientists play in improving improving science literacy and and and, and how do a social media platform like twitter and many others help in this endeavor yeah, I'm so glad that John Pierre mentioned comics uh, because indeed during the pandemic, a group of young researchers, including me, has launched a comic website to um, uh, tell people how they can increase language acquisition success during the lockdown, etc. We also thought that comics are really, really accessible format for that. Um, and uh, yeah, I think um, as he also pointed out, I think scientists should perceive themselves as actors uh, who have the responsibility to to disseminate and communicate science uh, and I think it's a really good thing that um, that agencies and institutions push for this a little bit and also give us more and more tools because I think one big problem is often not the willingness but uh, our capacity to do so because indeed it is very hard to communicate complex uh, relationships in science in an understandable and not misleading way. So I think we definitely um, need this support to be trained on science communication, to indeed work together with artists or science communicators to do that well. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy that this is happening more and more. And I think on our side, we need to be very um, aware of our responsibility to do so and really actively involved with these opportunities. And as to social media, um, I guess, um, as with many other things, it's both an opportunity and a threat, right? So um, it is a great way to disseminate content because we can circumvent hierarchy in a sense, right? So if we create fun content, then even if we're not uh, nature, people might read it because it's fun, it's engaging. But of course, this also means that the quality mark is not stamped on it. So that means that uh, people can also disseminate content that is not true, not accurate. Um, so I guess, um, yeah, and another flip side is, of course, that you might be preaching to the choir, which we also have seen a lot with this uh, bigger divide uh, in the information flow you get through social media that we can't really control ourselves, right, what we get in our feed. So um, I do think that it is a great way to create good content where you can reach people with but that other players have to help society in order to make social media a more equal and informed platform. High quality journalism has to be uh, supported, of course, because people get more and more used to free content online and maybe less and less critical of where this is actually coming from. Very good. So last but not least, science publishers and news outlets. Magdalena, can you tell us a bit about how 
those stakeholders can uh, help us improve uh, science literacy. Magdalena, you are muted, we can't hear you. Great, thank you very much. Um, so indeed, actually, it's it's really interesting to hear Jean-Pierre and, and Cho talk about this from, from their perspective. And I think, you know, all too often we can fall into this trap of thinking that somehow what we're discussing now is the domain of education. And, and then this, in turn, is the domain of the education systems or schools and universities and, and, and so on. But um, I think we have to look beyond and consider that we have a collective responsibility uh, when it comes to education and science literacy. And, and Jean-Pierre, for example, talked about uh, the responsibility that researchers have, which I also very strongly um, uh, support. But of course, this responsibility most emphatically extends to, to publishers and, and general uh, news outlets. And so, so Nature, the, the journal I edit from its very outset back in um, 1869, has had a dual mission. First to serve and work with the scientific community and of course to disseminate the research, but also and equally importantly, to bring these findings before the wider general public. And so we take full advantage of our journalism in its many forms, um, our accessible overviews and other types of content in which scientific findings are then placed in a wider context and therefore made more accessible. And importantly, we continuously think about different formats with which to engage different audiences and you know, show, for example, specifically spoke about social media, which we also uh, use uh, to this end. But we also um, have uh, podcasts and, and videos on our YouTube channel. And we know that we reach different audiences that would, we would otherwise not reach through our written content. And, you know, let me give you a very current example. So a while ago, we, we set up um, a daily newsletter called Nature Briefing, which is designed to um, deliver a basic science update on a daily basis, delivered by email. Um, and this has really come into its own during the pandemic. In fact, we, we dedicated specific section of the newsletter uh, to COVID-19 and, and the latest um, information. Um, and we've seen the subscribers to this completely free newsletter grow um, enormously and, and a large constituency in this subscriber pool um, is what we would hear in the context of this discussion uh, describe as the general public. And so, um, and, and importantly, in everything we do, and now I'm going back to that definition I gave at the very beginning, um, we continue to highlight these three aspects of, of science literacy. So the knowledge itself, the method, and then the relevance of, of science um, in, in general. And so I guess in, in a broader context, now, now looking to um, other publishers, other, other news media, um, I would like to take this opportunity to, to put out a plea, um, if I may, to all these information outlets um, to report responsibly in, in a balanced manner and to offer the platform to researchers themselves. And so I'm, now I'm really echoing what Jean-Pierre said earlier. We know from, from various surveys that scientists, that the profession of a scientist is among the most trusted professions, actually, despite all the doubts and, and all the um, concerns we have about uh, fake news. But since scientists as a profession is most trusted or, or very highly trusted, it makes therefore every sense to allow them to communicate directly to the wider public and therefore engage with them. Thank you, Madalena. You, you mentioned education, and I would like to uh, conclude the session with uh, uh, with asking all of you uh, very quickly. We don't have much time, so please one minute for uh, for, for answer. Uh, how uh, how do we need to improve the education system to improve science literacy? I, I believe that every human being should receive some level of scientific education, regardless of what people are going to do in their professional life. So, how do we do that, Jean Pierre? Well, I think for me, you know, the, the key people are, of course, the teachers. And uh, it's extremely important in society that teachers are well-trained, and I would say even well-retrained, because things are changing very quickly these days. 
uh, are aware and using the most uh, efficient uh, tools, uh, but also uh, their consideration in society is extremely important because they are the ones who can really uh, uh, tr transmit the information, but also give people the confidence that what they have been uh, receiving is really solid. And because I think the main challenge of uh, fake news, to, if we want to challenge fake news, is really to uh, make, um, train people to recognize what is an established fact from just uh, a fantasy. And from this point of view, the school should prepare the children for that. And the people who do that are the teachers. So value the teachers and train them properly. Very well. Uh, Magdalena, do you want to add anything on, uh, on, on uh, science education? So I would build on this and actually say that we need, all of us, we need to support the teachers and the formal education system. So education doesn't end the minute um, uh, you, us, our younger selves and our children uh, leave uh, the school building. But I think what I would also add is to be really effective in education, we need to think how we educate. So it has to be sensitive to the culture, to the social setting in which we're teaching, especially when we teach science. Sometimes, as I say, we may think that science is somehow apart from society, but we're much more effective uh, if we are uh, more sensitive and, and appropriately target um, our teaching with respect to societal and cultural uh, circumstances. Shaw, sure. uh, do you want to add on, uh, on this topic? Yeah, maybe I'll add on to the, to the content indeed of the science education. And I guess um, uh, I would perceive that we learn much more about facts about science than about the process and about the critical thinking. So I guess this is something that might need to change a little bit in curriculums. Um, and yeah, I guess just to, to uh, critically evaluate the, the methods behind the statistics, how we actually do statistics. I think uh, there is uh, not a lot of space in curricula for that. Um, and I think also um, students, if I talk to them, they really would profit from practically relevant examples and actually practical exercises. Go into your city and count, if you count 10 people or if you count 100 people, which one is more representative, right? Like things like that, I guess, could, 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 um, could help towards this goal. Thank you very much. So we are approaching the, uh, the end of the session and uh, it's time to me to, uh, to wrap up. We had a very interesting discussion and several important points were raised, starting with uh, the fact that science, literacy and communication are not just about the scientific results, the facts, the data, but also about the scientific method and process and the relevance, uh, relevance of science. Also, it was pointed out that too often we tend to forget how much our life has changed thanks to the extraordinary accomplishment of science and the giant step forward that science makes from decade to decade. We take this for granted, but it's actually the results of great ingenuity, huge efforts and, and, and painstaking uh, work. Um, we, also, uh, we also heard that uh, uh, we should not rush. Science requires requires patience. And uh, of course, when we are in the middle of a crisis like the, the, the current pandemic, we have to strike the right balance between, of course, producing results, vaccines or other, um, other, other drugs as, as soon as possible. But on the other hand, also going through uh, the solid and, and sound scientific uh, method. We, we, we heard about trust. It's very important that citizens improve, uh, increase their trust in, 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 in science. Um, we also heard that the different stakeholders from, uh, from uh, uh, science uh, research institutions to uh, publish have really taken uh, many steps uh, have taken many steps during the pandemic to uh, uh, um, approach uh, the citizens to, um, to to science uh, we we heard about um, educations and the importance of education in particular starting with with teachers so support the teachers uh, and empower the teachers and, and value uh, uh, their their work and we heard also also that, uh, that uh, the information that outlets publish out there uh, should report in a uh, res responsible, responsible way.